All right. Today is Saturday, uh, March 23. And I wanted to go through an exercise here before I start my weekly review. On uh, prior markets, I talked about 2017, how the NASDAQ's current market is correlating to 2017, where it's not having a meaningful pullback uh, more than 5%. It's just being supported at the 21. And it's been, you know, five months now where it's been doing this. Um, so I had to go back and look historically and beyond 2017. And I came <laughs> to the S&P, you know, because most people like the S&P. I prefer the NASDAQ, but... I'm going to do something historically. And I went back 30 years in 1994, uh, 93, 94, 95, essentially, where when the index doesn't make a new high for 12 months or more, like it did here, then it breaks to a new high. It, you, it, it's it gone here like 18 months without a significant pullback. And I'm talking about a meaningful one. And then finally, we get one here with 6%. Then we get a garden variety, 11% one here. But it still continues to rip on for years and years. I mean, this is a 90, what, 95 to 99. Okay, so we got four years of just, you know, yeah, we have pullbacks along the way. Um, but, and then in 98, we had, you know, the fall of 98, we had the uh, a big hiccup. But along the way, you could see it just trends higher. So, uh, like I said, I went back 30 years. I used the S&P because most people are comfortable with the S&P. And this is uh, from 94, 95, did not make a high um, for a year or more, 12 months or more. And then the 18 months, it had a, a rally without a pullback of more than 5%. And that's the point of um, this research here. So uh, that was, um, you know, we know the story there, how the dot-com crashed and, you um, but it did have a nice four-year run. Now, here we go again, where we have this, um, you know, more than a year without a high, then it breaks to the high here. Yeah, it pulled back a little bit, but we have, once again, you know, this run for like 18 months where it doesn't make, you know, a, a new, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't have a low of more than um, 5%. You know, that's, that's a heck of a rally right there. And then, of course, we have the... Um, Here's, here's your uh, year or more. Here's your rally without the pullback. And then, yeah, we get some along the way here. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, the fall of uh, 18, we had a nice hiccup. Then, of course, the COVID crash, but it still continued on much higher. So you're looking at, you know, from 20, you know, eight, um, 16, early 17, to uh, the end of 2021, you know, when it finally, um, you know, the, Jay Powell, a Fed induced uh, nasty bear market, you know, of 2022. Um, you know, that, that's that's a pretty nice run there of four years. So now we get to today's market. <clears throat> What's the date today? I did say uh, 323, 2024. And here you go. You know, we went um, on the S&P. We actually went more than two years or about two years. Uh, January to January, January 22 to January 24, without making a new high. Finally, we break to the new high. And then the last few weeks, we've had this nice run without a significant pullback. I'm going to go to the uh, NASDAQ now, up to date. I'm going to go to the daily. Um, and here's your, uh, you know, um, you know, your three legs down. Here's your breakout. Now we're running higher. Uh, and uh, we haven't had a pullback. It just keeps getting supported here at the, the 21. And uh, it's, I guess we could do this for the next 18 months like it has in the past. I just wanted to point that out to set the precedent. There has been a precedent where we could go 12 to 18 months without a significant pullback to the 50. So my expectation was every time it pulls back to the 21, it's going to come back to the 50 and it hasn't. So that's like an expectation breaker and a big tell for me that this market wants to go higher. Um, you know, I just look back at history just for a precedent because when I'm trading, I want as many things stacked in my favor as possible. And uh, this is telling me that my expectations of uh, the move to the 50 just aren't going to happen. It's, it hasn't happened, so I don't see why it would. I don't see why it wouldn't uh, rhyme with past history from the two uh, episodes that I showed you from, uh, you know, the 90s and the, 
the 2015 to 2021 uh, market. So anyway, anything can happen in the market. Sure, it could pull back to the 50, the, the, the 200 here, the black line, but it hasn't. And uh, there's precedent that says that it it's not going to. So anyway, I like to look at stocks and not um, <clears throat> indexes, but I just wanted to show you that. Um, yeah, I got to get this stuff off of here because I think it's significant. And anyway, um, this is NVIDIA here. <laughs> Broke out from that 500 area, and it's just been the beast of all beasts here. Uh, you know, it's got the earnings growth, uh, which is driving this uh, higher. I know I made that high of 974 on that uh, reversal Friday. Pulled back to the 10, and now moving uh, higher with its moving average here. I don't see, you know, why it wouldn't just uh, go go to 1,000 and take out that old high of 974 might have trouble with a thousand, but this thing has momentum heading in the right direction. Uh, the stock that everybody wants to own, they came out Monday with new products, you know, which is what you want in Can Slim. It's the N in Can Slim, you know, new highs, uh, you know, new products. Uh, so it's got the earnings, you know, quarter, you know, quarterly earnings, the sales growth. Uh, it's got um, it's got everything you want in a stock here. So. And that's why people are buying it. Anyway, everybody knows everything about uh, NVIDIA. I don't have to, anything to add there. It's just uh, one of my larger, I think it is my largest holding, and it's just uh, trending in the right direction. Anyway, all right. Uh, I wanted to get to a couple of more uh, stocks here in the uh, semiconductors. I'm going to start with the semiconductors and move on um, to the um, uh, some other groups here. There's so many stocks that are doing well that I just can't get to them all. <laughs> so I'm just going to specify, you know, a couple of groups that I like. This is a uh, Broadcom. They had an investor day, I believe, during the week, and they uh, announced some uh, new products as well. And uh, this just, you know, technically it just pulled back to its 50, found support, and then ripped tire. We, we're seeing a lot of this where they slice, the, you know, their moving averages and then they trade up immediately, just do a sharp, uh, you know, put their foot in the ground and drive up the field like a Debo. We're seeing a lot of Debo's in these charts here. Now, this is AMD. This is going to be on my ready list for Monday. It's been on my ready list because I'm expecting this, you know, pullback. We just saw Broadcom. What did it do? You know, it trades higher. I expect this to go back to 200. Uh, but we'll see. You know, we'll take it one day at a time. Now, these things can do anything. Like I said, anything can happen in the stock market. This is ARM. This is I got to go to the weekly chart. This is a weekly review. Thank you for watching my weekly review. This is your, you know, high tight flag pattern. It's not very tight, but that's definitely a pole and that's definitely a flag. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens with the uh, arm here. I have a 132 buy point on this thing, uh, but we'll just see. Um, all right, <clears throat> let me go to, um, all right, let me see. I did, okay, I did those four. I'm going to move on. I got some other stuff to do. I'm going to go to the data center. And power uh, plays, you know, uh, Jensen did talk about how much energy we're going to use. So after I get through these uh, uh, couple of data center plays, I'm going to go to the energy and power uh, construction group because they've been really strong. And, uh, you know, it's going to put a big strain on the grid. Uh, this is SMCI. They had a secondary offering. They joined the S&P 500. Then they did a secondary offering, uh, you know, the day after they joined. This thing was 30% off of its uh, high last week. It's closed Friday, you know, 21% off the high. I know a lot of people think this is done and want to short the stock. I'm not, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do that personally. Um, you can see its earnings line is just, you know, still heading due north. So I don't know why the stock would go down. Uh, we'll see, you know, when they report earnings uh, whenever they do that. What is that? Uh, April 30th, I believe. Yeah, it's scheduled for April 30th. So we'll see how Supermicro does. But um, yeah, joined the S&P and uh, did not have a good week. It's been in on the last couple of weeks. 21% off of its high. Vert, no problems here. Man, this thing just keeps romping higher. And um, <clears throat> you know, some people, again, you know, in a bull market, stocks can go a lot higher than you expect them to. So don't don't be calling these things tops. And, you know, I know that if I go to the daily chart, I'm getting frustrated here with people. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> you know, they want to draw lines and say, oh, this, you know, went above. It's, uh, you know, 
I don't know what the upper channel. Yeah, it's above of its upper channel, but the people who are long are saying, yeah, they're just counting their cash. You know, it could stay above its upper channel for a long time. Uh, so, you know, the stock doesn't know that line's there. Um, it's got a lot of momentum, a lot of strength, up more than 11% last week. So, yeah, I just, you know, I think you're getting too cute if you're trying to short strong stocks in a bull market. I don't know. Some people just are, you know, adrenaline junkies, I guess. But anyway, uh, power, this is Quanta Services. Talked about the uh, power um, needed for the data center and the AI revolution. So if I go back to the NASDAQ, and the, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to, I digress. I'm going to go back to the NASDAQ and say, if you believe that this is a um, AI revolution and this is, you know, just beginning here with these stocks and the NASDAQ had this cup with handle and just starting to break out to new highs and it's going to go to 20,000 or higher. Like I believe the AI revolution is a, uh, because when I listened to Jensen on Monday, it just felt like a new era for me. And so um, it's going to require a lot of power. And I think these things can go a lot higher than you expect them to or could have even imagined them. This is power. One of my uh, favorite um, is Quanta Services, ticker symbol PWR. I just call it power. It had the three weeks tight, now moved higher to new highs last week. And so there's going to be a lot of stocks that are not just AI stocks or auxiliary plays, uh, derivatives, whatever you want to call them, of the uh, AI revolution. And this is an area where you can play. And I think that's going to do really well uh, for the um, what I believe is a new era. It, it reminded me of Steve Jobs' uh, Thousand Songs in Your Pocket speech. Um, and he even uh, channeled some Steve Jobs there on Monday. So Jensen is uh, Jensen's my hero. You know, he's doing fantastic work. Uh, this is Sterling, which is you know, forming like a shelf type pattern. Pull back to its 21. Uh, you know, I guess another week it would be a flat base pattern. Yeah, it's got, you know, four weeks there flat. But I don't know if this thing's going to really wait. It's uh, I think it's going to break out of its shelf and take out that old high of 116. Super strong stock. Um, you know, I looked into their uh, website and uh, the things they got going on. I think that could, could be a good holding and could go much higher, I believe. VST, I mean, <laughs> these things are just um, going parabolic. This is a utility, okay? The utilities usually don't run like that, but uh, this one sure is. It's got the the ants, and you can see the earnings are just kind of flat here, this earnings line, uh, but the stock is going parabolic, so maybe the earnings will catch up. Like I said, the uh, AI revolution is going to use a lot of uh, power. Another one that I like is Jacob's Solutions. I haven't talked about it much, but you can see the earnings starting starting to tick up here a little bit. If you look at their website, it looks like a little kindergartner put it together. I don't know what's wrong with these guys. Get a professional website, people. Um, no, I don't judge. I don't judge companies on their websites, but this one's uh, just surfing. It's uh, you know moving averages, moving higher. Broke out of a base. It's a slower mover, but you know new highs. You know, made a new high last week. You know, you can't argue with that. New highs are bullish. Anyway, I'm going to get off the semiconductor AI revolution power play and go to um, the oil and gas group. Like I said, there's so many groups that are doing well. I can't get to them all. Not even possible. Um, but it's a weekly review. So I'm going to go over some stocks that made new highs last week and that have been showing strength. This is uh, ARROC, A-R-O-C, made a new high last week. Um, you can see these earnings line here trending higher with the stock. Uh, it's amazing how uh, you know earnings drive stock prices. Anyway, I had this on my radar list. You can see why it's got the paint by numbers. Um, you know, 1942 uh, buy point there made a new high and pullback on Friday. Yeah, I like Arch Rock. Uh, another one that I had on my ready list recently, but it just broke out. You can see once again the paint by numbers uh, buy point. It's traded sideways, waiting for the moving averages to catch up and then blasted higher. This is Permian Resources. Uh, PR is the uh, ticker symbol. And then Fang, of course, you know, most people know Fang. Uh, it's got, uh, just bought a company in the Permian Basin and one of the stronger oil and gas uh, U.S. exploration stocks. 
you can see it had this long consolidation. The longer the base, the higher in space, and it's just pushing away from its base here now. And once again, not a dramatically fast mover, but you can see how strong this stock is. And uh, you know, right now it's just you know moving with its ten uh, EMA. So this is the super bull market, man. There's so many good stocks that are just performing well. Um, Tidewater is another one. Uh, consolidation here, then there's the breakout, the pullback to the 10, and now it's just following its 10 higher, 10 EMA higher. Looks fantastic. Uh, that's a field services stock. Okay, I'm going to move on out of the oil patch and to the banks. I normally don't cover the banks too often, but you just can't ignore JP Morgan here. This is the, one of the larger banks here with the uh, 566 billion market cap. You could see this consolidation and breaking out of a base and so you know yeah you want to buy it here right <laughs> when it's you know in a base and now it's ripping higher how do you buy that mm, i don't know maybe just uh, close your eyes and hope that it keeps going higher uh, phenomenal performance though kind of like the nasdaq just these little pullbacks to moving averages and uh, just trending higher uh, a lot of stocks uh, look this way city group come on city group jp morgan you can <laughs> You can see this one just uh, broke out of a base and moving higher. I got to go to the weekly though. Oh yeah, this is a stage one consolidation and broke out and moving higher. You can see it's getting near the profit zone, but man, you know, these banks are just doing fantastic. Uh, BK, a stock I never, ever would uh, highlight, but you can see this consolidation here. Yeah, this is a stage one base broke out. What was this five weeks tight went into a flat base it's really like 10 weeks right because that's a flat base on a flat base look at this and um just broke out last week so that's why i mentioned it's got the paint by numbers 56 42 by point and uh bank of new york melon looks fantastic man i can't believe i'm saying that and then schwab schwab is more of a uh you know your your uh, broker type uh, bank, but you can see it's had this cup. I had it on my uh, ready list because it had this nice, you know, stage one base here, but then it fell out of bed here, undercut its moving averages and now moving higher. So um, Schwab trading higher. Uh, yeah, the banks look fantastic, but not as good as the um, the foreign banks and particularly South America, Argentina, Brazil. This is NU Holdings. Um, you can see this consolidation here and just ripping higher, uh, man, making new highs. There's not much to say about these. Um, G A G G A L G G A L. I can't you know pretend like I know what these are doing. I'm just looking at these charts and saying you know they're making new highs. New highs are bullish. So um, <laughs> you know there's your breakout and the move higher, the pullback, and uh, you can see a couple times here it pulled back. So it's give people an opportunity to get in and then boom rips higher so i would wait for another pullback if you're interested in that one um what else do i have in this oh bma somebody alerted me to these on uh, my youtube channel like hey you take a look at these so um that's why i'm doing this anyway the earnings um you know line you know going straight up the stock going straight up there's a correlation there. It was only up, oh, what, 19% last week. So I'm just pointing it out and just bringing these to your attention. These are making new highs. They're showing, you know, a ton of strength. Um, do with it as you will. Um, this is one uh, CIB Bank of Colombia. And this one still is, uh, to me, actionable. It's still in this consolidation phase here. You can see this cup, uh, you know, three weeks tight in here. Now, last week, it had a good week broke out. But to me, it's still actionable. It hasn't gone parabolic like those other ones that I showed you. Anyway, I'm going to move on from the banks. That's enough of the banks. And I got to go to the drugs. Um, this is a Collegium uh, Pharmaceutical. This is in one of the stronger uh, groups, medical generic drugs. I think it's in the top five of uh, top performing groups in 2024, which is less than three months along. But you can see this big consolidation moved higher than went flat, you know, flat base for, I don't know how many weeks is that? Eight weeks, six weeks, whatever. And now it's making a new high every week. Yikes. Um, 
so yeah, Collegium is showing uh, a lot of strength. Eli Lilly, you got to show Eli Lilly, right? <clears throat> to me, this is like a flat base pattern here on the weekly chart. You can see the earnings line going south here, and the stock is still, you know, trading sideways. Um, but, you know, this thing's probably going to be your first trillion dollar uh, drug stock. It's a $732 billion now. Pull back to the 21, just trending higher. It looks kind of like a bear wedge there. Eh, I don't know about uh, Lily, but um, yeah, the earnings line is going down and Novo Nordisk. Um, I got to go to the weekly chart on this. They just got approved for cardiovascular disease by Medicare. So Medicare is going to cover them. And you can see their earnings um, you know, line going straight up. They're selling everything they can make, like Eli Lilly in the um, weight loss space. These guys are more obesity and uh, weight loss and now kidney and cardiovascular. And if I just go to the monthly, I mean, this thing, uh, thing of beauty. This is 25 years of growth here for Novo Nordisk. And now you can see recently here, here's your weight loss, uh, you know, Wegovy, Ozempic, <laughs> drive for the last few years, five years or so. So anyway, um, any more drugs? Oh yeah, NBIX. This is one that, I, you know, it's this stock piqued my interest. It's got the uh, sales and earnings growth that you like. Um, tried to break out of a base here. This is a daily chart. So, you know, sometimes you just got to ignore the wiggles. It went up, looked like it was going to, uh, you know, take off on Thursday and then pull back to near its 50 on Friday. So this thing's just wiggling around. Um, you can see it's just this flat base here and it made that high. It was still up last week, you know, nearly you know, one, one and three quarter percent, 4.7 percent off of its high. So that's a that's a decent pullback. And uh, I, I would imagine, you know, this this thing will resolve higher. Uh, like I said, it's got got the nice growth here that you like. This is not a fly by night uh, speculative biotech play. And I'm not going to do any of those today. Because I got to move on. Like I said, there's so many things to get to. Uh, Dream Finder Home, the home builders. They stalled for a little bit, you know, with um, you know their, the rates going up. You can see this is a nice consolidation, consolidation. But now Dream Finder, and this is the, the pattern that we're seeing a lot uh, recently <laughs> with the pullback in the index to the 21 and blasting higher. This one undercut its moving average and blasted higher. If you just look at the weekly chart, you can see the earnings line trending higher and uh, the stock's trending higher along with it. Wow, imagine that. What a correlation. Uh, DR Horton, uh, they had a nice little a consolidation uh, recently. This is a flat base here for eight weeks and now blasted off the new highs. It was up you know, nearly 7% last week. It was a big move for a company like that. These are not fast moving stocks, but you could see it gapped up there on Thursday. And DR Horton looks fantastic. Uh, GRBK is another one. Green Brick, they do business in the South. Uh, what is this, Dallas and Atlanta markets? Those are big cities. Uh, nice consolidation here. And just last week, starting to break away here. Nice 8% move. And you can see it's right near its high. Um, Green Brick, uh, yeah, we like new highs. So Green Brick looks fantastic. Oh, and I got to do Pulte. You got to do Pulte. Come on. Uh, this one broke out. And once again, just like DR uh, Horton uh, on Thursday, you know, made a new high, consolidated for a little bit, ripped, formed a little shelf, trading higher again at 5% last week, right, you know, near a high, just barely off its high. So anyway, the home builders look fantastic. And I'm going to go to the retail because we had some retail earnings last week that were not very good. You know, the guidance from Nike, they're... Um, how can I put this delicately? This is the biggest stock in the retail apparel shoes group. It's the big kahuna. So it's it's going to drive that market. And it really drove some stocks down on Friday after that report. Um, you know, they're kind of living off the past. You know, Air Jordan, <laughs> their big selling shoe. I don't think Jordan's played basketball in like 20 years. So they they don't, they lack innovation. They promised more innovation, but they're not delivering 27% off of its high. A down, you know, almost 6% last week. Cratered on Friday, um, you know, after that earnings report. So anyway, that that really drove down the um, the shoe group. Lululemon, another one that's loosely in that group, retail apparel shoes. 
it fell 15 percent. this thing's got some uh you know young uh companies nipping at its heels i think uh taking a little market share from it um it's still it's a cash cow you know look at the cash flow return on equity this these guys you know you don't have to start a charity for them but um it did slice its moving averages and you know if you're looking at a daily chart um that's adios muchachos uh, for me i mean if i was holding that stock anyway those are two uh, not very good earnings report and guidance, but didn't phase Crocs. This is unbelievable for me. This is a Tom Petty stock. Will not back down. Even with the, um, you know, the earnings reports from Nike and uh, Lulu, it started down on Friday. It gapped down and buyers came in, stepped in, and the darn thing finished higher on Friday. I couldn't believe it when I saw the close because it was down pretty good um, on Friday. And then... <laughs> closed higher so some buyers came in yeah it was down 138.62 was the low you know and it closed at 141 near the high um psh, unbelievable yeah 91 percent of its daily range you know so somebody likes crocs somebody's buying crocs i mean uh, to me you know it's surfing it's 10 here i don't know i don't know when it got upgraded last week i kind of wish i did and i might buy it on a pullback this is just uh looks like it wants higher prices Anyway, um, that's enough for the shoe group, right? No, I'm going to go to On Holdings. This is one that I, it's a dilemma for me. I like the chart. I don't care for the shoes. I like the chart and I'm here to make money. So I don't really care about my bias for the product, but I do like the chart. I don't like the valuation, really. I like the growth. So there's some things I like about it. There's some things I don't. Um, I think they're taking market share from Nike, you know, as is uh, Decker. So on holdings is definitely, you know, on my watch list. Decker's joined the S&P and didn't have the same faith as, um, didn't have the same fate as uh, Supermicro because they didn't do a secondary offering. I think both of those stocks need to split their stock. Anyway, um, it had another good week up more than 1%. It's just trending higher. Though so, uh, Decker's, they're taking uh, market share from Nike as well with their Hoka brand for sure. And they just came out with a new uh, design um, a couple weeks ago. Anyway, that's it for the retail name. Except for I lied, I have more to do. This is uh, Elf, pulled back to its 21. Like I said, we see this a lot, undercut its moving average and ripped tires. So, you know, you embrace the pullbacks. Don't be afraid of them. It pulled back uh, two weeks in a row after this consolidation move higher. Now. Yeah, I know a lot of people would think, well, man, look, at it's going to do exactly what it did here. It formed this base in this, in this nasty bear market. Then it broke out, ripped higher, flattened out, ripped higher, flattened out, kind of a stair stepper here, right? And then it got here, and uh, this is more than a year of just kind of straight up. Then it formed this base again, right? And what is it doing? Had this three weeks tight, pulled back to that 131, the moving average, and now ripping higher. It might do that again. It, it very well could. Um, yeah, I mean, Elf, look at, look at the earnings line is pointing due, uh, due north. You could see how it's just, you know, from the IPO, had this nice base cup with handle, and it's just taken off. So, you know, that's why I say you got to embrace pullbacks. When these things pull back, it pull back for two weeks there. And, it, you know, don't get scared. I mean, it's finding support and moving higher. So uh, that's it for my retail stocks. Uh, I'm going to go to, I lie once again, because I'm going to go to the retail restaurant group. I'm not going to do the the wing stock, the Texas Roadhouse. You know about Chipotle's 50 to 1 stock split. I'm going to go to some uh, other ones. This one is uh, Kura Sushi. I've never been there, but I hear they have robots there serving you. It is uh, thinly traded, uh, 88,000 average daily volume. That is not very much. That's thin like your sashimi cut. Uh, but if you look at the weekly chart, it had this 110 uh, area. When was this? Uh, okay, late 2022. Uh, and then, um, you know, form that base. Oh, what am I doing here? Marty, you're a retard. Sometimes this is, it's only been, uh, okay, since so it was a 110 in J July of 2023. Uh, sometimes I think too much. Okay, so it's got this right here breakout from this, uh, you know, nice, you know, you could call that, you know, cup with handle pattern here. Kira sushi, that's really textbook stuff. So um, 
<clears throat> I don't know. I mean, I saw a lady on Bloomberg. She's a financial stock picker from one of those Wall Street firms, and she mentioned this stock that she really liked it. I've never been there, but you know, you can't deny the chart. Looks fantastic. It's got the uh, growth profile. It looks fantastic. So it's near a buy point. So it may uh, show up on one of my sushi plates um, with sashimi. It is it is really super thin. Uh, um, SG Sweet Green. Once again, never been here. I don't go out to restaurants much, but I like this. You know, consolidation here out of stage one base, moving higher. I mean, who doesn't like that? Making new highs with big, powerful volume moves. And um, yeah, it's got the growth profile, sweet greens. This uh, has got the ants, the David Ryan ants here. And uh, just trending higher. Uh, Shake Shack. Okay, I did. I lied. I am going to these ones that I normally cover. Gapped out of a base. And this is why we pay attention to these earnings gaps. But, you know, pulled back to a moving average and now just surfing the. 10 like a Kelly Slater hanging 10 on its uh it's a, it's, a, it's a short board. Anyway, that's it for me, except for I lie once again in honor of the great Steve Jobs. One more thing. Finally, we're getting some IPO stocks. Finally. Um, that is a sign of a healthy market when um stocks, you know, companies want to bring their private uh companies to public market. And I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna show a couple. I'm not going to really talk a lot about them because I'm not going to pretend like I know a lot about them. I'm just going to show you the chart. Uh, this is uh, BBB Foods, obviously trading higher. Somebody likes it. Um, <laughs> there's your earnings line going straight north. So, you know, the stock should follow the earnings line, folks. So write that ticker symbol down, TBBB. It's got some volume here, $23 stock. Um, you know, it's got earnings and sales growth. That one looks good. I said I wasn't going to talk about them, right? SDHC is a Smith Douglas home. This is a home builder. Once again, you know, I just showed you the, the home building stocks are doing fantastic. This thing looks like an IPO too low of a price. Uh, this one, once again, has pretty strong sales and it's got earnings. You know, it's expected to earn $2.73 next year. It's probably should be a $40 stock. Uh, IPO to what, 21? Yeah, look at this, you know, 30% growth anticipated here in the next few quarters. So uh, Smith Douglas Home, like I said, I wasn't going to talk a lot about these. Uh, this is Astera Labs. This one is a semiconductor, just came out. Um, like, once again, I don't know much about it. This is like three days of trading. So not much track history there. Reddit, two days of trading. Um, and the, yeah. Okay, I'm going to move on. I think this has been in business 19 years and not profitable. So um, I'm not going to be um, buying uh, that one. A AS, uh, Amer Sports, know nothing about it. Cayman Island base, that's you know something that I would uh, say might be a red flag there. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. Uh, I just maybe watch it. But uh, yeah, Cayman Islands, leisure product group, not too strong. Uh, BTSG. So hopefully you're writing these tickers down and you're going to watch some of these. This is a Bright Spring Health Services and medical group. The medical group's been doing pretty well. Uh, it doesn't have the real growth that we're looking for here, but um, okay. That's why it's uh, heading down, I guess. Uh, let me see. SMXT. This is the last one I'm going to show. All right, Solar Max technology. Obviously, solar's been doing really poorly. 190 out of 197 groups. Uh, this one's hanging in there pretty well, though. I mean, it's an $8 stock. Um, yeah, it's got the earnings line going uh, due north. So um, maybe, you know, things will turn around and you, know, you can do some bottom fishing in the solar market. Anyway, that's it for me. Uh, there is one more that I got to mention, though, Anthropic is coming out with an IPO. This is an AI play. This is going to be a really big IPO. It's going to uh, launch its IPO pretty soon. I think it was around $62. Uh, so that's definitely one to watch for. It's going to be a, a pretty hot stock, I believe. And that's it for me. Thank you for watching my weekly review. A lot of stuff going on. Definitely a super strong market. And uh, if I just go back to the NASDAQ, uh, the trend is your friend and, you know, it's trending higher uh, and, and there's no telling how 
long it can do this and, and continue to find support at the 21. You know, you could do it for a, a lot longer than you think. I would turn off all the financial media, these negative Nellies, uh, and just watch the chart day by day. Just observe what's happening here since this, you know, bottom uh, from the three legs down. This, this has just been uh, a super strong rally. We've been on green since I think November 11th, something like that. Um, and just riding the trend. And there's a lot of strong stocks that I didn't even get to today, uh, making new highs and um, <laughs> making people, uh, you know, a little happier in their portfolio. Anyway, thank you for watching at mcstockcharts.com. We never give up. Have a great weekend.